Hi, this is Mark with Raw Nutrition. In this video, we'll be comparing the Kubings Whole Slow Juicer and the Omega 8006. We'll be juicing uh, spinach leaves. We've had many requests to juice leafy greens, so let's give it a test and see which juicer excels in this juicing experience. So as I mentioned, we've got uh, 16 ounces, one pound of spinach leaves. These are washed spinach leaves. I chose the whole spinach leaves with the stems. A little more fiber to see a little bit how each juicer handles that. So the 8006, you definitely know it's a very good machine for juicing greens. The only thing is the opening is smaller. We have a one and a half inch round opening. So you really have to push everything in. Feed everything in. See how much juice we get between the two models. So the Omega 8006 turns at 80 revolutions per minute compared to the new Kubing's Whole Slow Juicer. That one turns at 60 revolutions per minute. Obviously, a little more work feeding our 8006, getting our leaves inside that feed chute, one and a half inch feed chute. Well, there's really no uh, faster way to push them in in small pumps. So the 8006 is like the 8004. 8004 is white. The 8006 is the chrome finish, a little more expensive to produce the chrome version. That's why it's a little more expensive. Uh, mirror finish, imagine the cost of production is different than just a plain white. But 8004 and 8006 are really the same juicer. They have the same auger screen. Just the other 8004, the the black parts on here are white, and so is the whole motor base. Omega has a couple new models, the 8007 and 8. Basically, the base is redesigned on those models. And so the new look, no, uh, no longer is there a white one. The 8007 is silver. The 8007 is silver, and the 8008 is chrome like this model here. They're a little more expensive. They're really very similar, but not quite the same. I was told the parts aren't interchangeable. I think Omega was experiencing a little different manufacturing for those 8007 and 8008 models. There's one bag down, so we have a half a pound that we've juiced. I'll just keep going. We've got the new Omega 8000, uh, the 800, I should say, and the 900, the NC800 HDS and the NC900 HDC. Those are single auger juices, very much like the 8006, except you've got a, a larger opening. Now we'll certainly do a video comparing that. We have done one between the 8006 and the, the 900. Uh, I think we were doing carrots. You can look that up in our videos on YouTube. We haven't done a greens one to compare the two models. So we'll do one in the future. So those newer models, larger feed shoots, and a little bit of con uh, pulp outlet control that this model doesn't offer. When juicing greens like this, especially if we're juicing uh, greens exclusively, you can expect some foam buildup. I personally like to juice my vegetables and mix them up. I like to juice a carrot, some beets, 
celery, some greens during the juicing process. I find it reduces the foam buildup. There's our pulp. You can also use uh, baby spinach, which I like to use also. The I chose these because there is more fiber. We'll see how that responds in the upright juicers, which uh, some sometimes have some fiber blockage. I haven't experienced that with the whole slow juicer. Okay, we're just about done. And that's it. And there you have it. Looks like we've pretty much processed all our greens. And I just did a forward reverse to clear out anything that might have been left inside. Now we'll try our whole slow juicer. Open that up. Well, we definitely have a nice large opening. Since we do have the spinach that doesn't really fall down in there, we will have to use the pusher to get them in there. Definitely a lot easier to put them in. Lots of space. Uh, this will take less time to feed and juice because I can put a small handful at a time and it'll have to push them into the one and a half inch round peachy. The whole slow juicer has a three inch peachy. Starting to get some juice. Now, generally, the horizontal masticating juicers like the 8006 do the best job at juicing greens. With the greens. Now we'll see today how the whole slow juicer does the work. I think I'm just feeding it in handfuls waiting to push more in until the first handful has been processed. Got the bottom of the bag here. Put that in. Those that fall to the bottom on their own are getting pretty much processed. I don't need to push them in. Every now and then you do have to put your pusher there. To get the auger to pick that up. I don't recommend juicing just greens like this on your own. You'll always find your juicer more efficient when you vary your types of fruits and vegetables. It helps to clear out pulp and that when you use different fibers. Okay, 
It's slowly taking up the last batch I put in, so I'll let it run a little bit. Maybe even stop in reverse. It looks like I had a, a good clump in there. some more in and see what happens. Well, the pulp is coming out nicely, nice and dry, compact. There, I had a little build up there that wasn't quite getting processed. Continue. I can continue putting this in now. So even with greens, it's like you don't want to overfeed. Let the machine take up what it can. And this one is turning at 60 revolutions per minute, the whole slow juicer. In fact, at 80, it is a little slower turning. Say 25% slower. One advantage I'm having here is the Large feed chute. Put in big pumps at a time and get this processed. Getting near the end of our bag here. Put in the rest of the spinach leaves. Up. There's nothing left inside here. And we'll do a reverse and a forward to clear out any remaining pulp. One thing I have found with the slow, the whole slow juicer, there can be some pulp sometimes that just stays right here. So I occasionally have to open up the chute, knock that in. And then start it up to get that auger to take it out. I guess by design, the pusher doesn't quite reach these areas. So you can have things that end up sticking on the sides and don't get processed. But you can always check that. Simply stop your juicer and look inside. And by doing the forward reverse, you'll eventually get that last clump of fiber chewed up by the juicer. Well, it looks like I've completed here juicing both amounts. We definitely have a fair bit of foam over on the upright juicer side. Cooing this full slow juicer. And our result with the Omega 8006. See some foam on the top and the juice on the bottom. So let's go ahead and, and measure that. Filter that and measure and see what we get. I will, and this one has settled a bit, so I will go and mix that a little bit. There's really nothing wrong with the foam, just a natural process as the auger is turning for foam to build up. 
especially the slow juice. Slow juicer like this, turning at 80 revolutions per minute. There's really no oxidation. Clear this up really good. Will that let that settle a little bit? And let's do the same with this juice. did have one pound of spinach, fresh spinach leaves, whole leaves, not the baby spinach. And then you can see we definitely have a lot of foam with our whole slow juicer. I definitely recommend when juicing greens to juice them with other vegetables to get better results. We have many people requesting us to juice greens in these uh, comparison videos between the two. So we'll look at the foam here over on the 8006. Still a fair bit of foam. I really can't filter that. This is a really fine strainer. We'll have to sit here for a little while. To get the juice out of that. Same thing with the Kubings whole slow juicer. The foam is definitely lighter, not as thick. So for the purposes of this video, we'll let this sit a little bit and we'll continue shortly once this has settled and we've gotten the most juice. Okay, so we had this sitting about five minutes. I see we still have a fair bit of foam left to decant over on this side. Whole slow juicer. Our yield was definitely better. The Omega 8006. We do still have a fair bit of foam on top. So our measuring cup. 200 milliliter line, but we definitely have them close together closely. We have over 100 milliliters of spinach juice with the Omega 8006. And probably it's a little bit less than that with the Kubings full slow juicer. As far as ease of use, the 8006 
Produced some more juice, but it was a little more work to push it in. And the whole slow juicer was easy to feed, but didn't get quite as much a final yield as the 8006 did. Again, this is Marv from Raw Nutrition. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for up-to-date comparison videos of your favorite juicers in action. Thank you.